Hi guys, I got a really nifty little box project this week with a sliding lid. The construction of this box is similar to a bandsaw box. If you've made a bandsaw box, you'll, you'll kind of recognize some of the techniques of cutting off one side, saving that for the back, and then cutting out the center part, gluing the back back on. Uh, the only difference is, in this case, I didn't use the bandsaw at all. Quick shout out to Larry Clinton who sent me some wood a while back that I'm going to use today. I, I think some of it is mahogany and I think that's what this is, but I'm, I'm not really that good at my wood species. But it's real heavy. It's probably three or four times as heavy as pine. But I wanted to show you the difference that uh, aging has on wood. Okay, this is the piece as he sent it to me. Now let me show you this one which is exactly the same kind of wood. The only difference is I've sanded this one down nice and smooth. And if you ever wanna see what the wood is going to look like once it's finished, you can just rub some naphtha on there or mineral spirits. You could even use water if you want, but it'd probably raise the grain. Uh, so, wow, that's some beautiful wood. I ripped that uh, chunk of wood into two pieces uh, so I can make two different boxes. Like a bandsaw box, I need to start by cutting off the back and the front. In this case, it's going to be the bottom and the lid. So I've cut the bottom off pretty thin and this is going to be the sliding top. All right, so here is the inside of my box. I'll need to sand it down some. Uh, you could certainly do that on the bandsaw if you prefer. The reason why I decided to try to use the scroll saw was to avoid the, uh, the entry points that I would have to glue back together again. I think it's important to sand the bottom piece now before I attach it just because, uh, you know, getting sandpaper in there is going to be difficult. And now, of course, this will be the top, which will go on like that. Now I can go over to the router and make the slider. I've installed a dovetail bit into my router table, and I've set it to where it's just below the depth of the lid. And now what I'll do is I will route out the top part of the box, like so. Okay, so there are my dovetails. Now I need to take it over the router and just cut out this part there. And uh, hey, did you notice? It's a lot thinner than it was before. <laughs> I've been in this huge woodworking slump lately where I have just been screwing stuff up. Let me show you. So what happened is for one reason or another, I still haven't really figured it out, is that my dovetail bit wasn't really firmly attached in the chuck. And so it was just kind of going, <laughs> moving up and down. I'm glad the thing didn't fly off. I mean, I was lucky I was wearing these safety glasses. Well. They would have been there if I hadn't been shooting this part right now. So, at any rate, I was having, uh, some of these were going down deeper than others, and I just couldn't figure out, why is it doing that? It doesn't make any sense. Uh, so, I ended up just uh, cutting off part of <laughs> this and recutting those dovetails and, well, now it's going to be a crochet hook holder. <laughs> because I went around the house trying to figure out things that could fit in there. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's the project. It's a crochet hook holder. <laughs> All right, so this is how it's going to go. Uh, there's my dovetail cuts on both sides and the lid will slide into there right like that. What I got to do is I have to make, you know, this reverse dovetail cut on the lid.
When I ran that through the router, I left a little bit of that lip up there so that it would run straight and not just fall back. Uh, now I've broken all of that off and, you know, let's see, not too bad like that. So that's how it's going to fit in and I can sand these parts down to get it even. And now I have glued that bottom back onto the box and I have some time to kill. <laughs> Wow, it's always the simplest projects that just cause the most troubles, it seems like. Uh, hey, in the meantime, you guys, if you want to check out what's going on in Woodworking for Mere Mortals during the week, uh, check out Wood Bits. I've just started doing that. I'll post a link here. Uh, it's another YouTube channel uh, just with stuff going on around my shop. I'll still keep posting regular videos on Fridays. And with a round over bit, I just rounded over all of the edges on the box. And with a few coats of lacquer on it, the box is done. There's a lot of different ways you could make this box. You could certainly use the bandsaw for most of the cuts. I was trying to avoid that entry point because I didn't want this, I didn't want to have to glue it back together and create maybe an out of square box. Uh, I'm not so sure that's so important. I think in retrospect, you could probably use the bandsaw. I originally was going to cut out the center part using uh, a straight bit on my router. And I found I couldn't do that because I wanted the deeper box and my router bit certainly wouldn't go deep enough. And well, as it turned out, I could have done it on the router. Uh, you probably don't really need to use a scroll saw even. Uh, you could cut out the center part with a hand saw. So there's a lot of different ways to do this project. The key technique is that dovetail, the dovetail sides on it that create that little slide to it. Thanks for watching guys. Visit my website woodworkingformeremortals.com and uh, check me out over on Facebook. Talk to you later.